So often we celebrate risk takers, the people that we feel step into the unknown, you know, build something without a concrete sense for what the outcome might be, or live boldly, authentically, regardless of the repercussions. But what about those individuals for whom risk is the only option? Three stories. One, it's 1978, it's pre-revolution Iran. The Shah and the, mon and the monarchy were quite hospitable to Jews. They lived a quite comfortable life. My mother was about 18, it was 1978. Her father and his brothers were some of the biggest furniture designers and distributors in all of Tehran, quite broadly known citywide. As 79 rolled in and the revolution took full force, things changed drastically and dramatically and haven't gone back since. The hijab was required of women covering their hair and their bodies. Public curfews were set. Celebrations in their entirety were pretty much banned. You could do that in private, although men and women would have to be separated, and there was absolutely no alcohol to be there. My mother and father met in 1980, just about a year after. Both of their families were under the impression that things are going to get better. It will go back to normal. Obviously, it didn't. In 81, the two of them were married. They actually had to get permission from the revolutionary police to have the wedding, and then they paid two armed guards to stand at the door as security guards to ensure that the celebration wasn't disturbed or interrupted. By 82, it became clear that things were not only not getting better, but they were getting quite worse. They made the decision that so many individuals, Jewish people of all backgrounds and different realities, have made to this day the decision to flee, to escape. They paid smugglers to take them through the mountains of Pakistan, where they eventually began a three-month-long journey that took them to Switzerland, London, New York, and eventually Los Angeles. Their Jewish identity was at the core of their escape. The hope for a Jewish future was a hope that merited the risk. Story two. I remember it like it was yesterday. The feelings are so vivid for me. I was in sixth grade, I was 12 years old, fifth period, physical education. Going into the locker room every day was such a thing. There was this energy that I saw everyone else enter in that room with. They got to their locker, they changed their clothes as quickly as possible, and they made their way out almost as though it was a competition. I definitely felt different in that room. I, I played along, I competed, but I knew I was different and I hated that feeling of difference. Uh, understanding, I mean, well, at that time I was just curious in that room. It took me probably another year or so to recognize that I was gay. This was petrifying for me. Not only because being gay, you know, gay slurs were so commonly used that I just, I believed it to be the worst possible reality on the universe. But beyond that, I was searching constantly. Everywhere I was, in every family gathering, every Shabbat, every mega Persian bar mitzvah or wedding, and if you know Persians, they're mega, um, and I found no one. I could not find a single role model that I could bind my future to and say, there he is. That's what my future looks like. It would be another decade for me until I was able to come out to the first soul in my life, and it was only because of Ryan's risk. Ryan was another Persian Jewish fraternity brother in A.E. Pi at UC San Diego, and he chose to come out to me, beginning my seven-year-long journey to coming out of the closet fully. Story three, it was about a year and a half ago, I got a message on OkCupid. Okay now, I wasn't on the app, or active on the app for about a year, so it was already odd to get a message. I was excited. Um, <laughs> the message said something along the lines of, you don't know me, but I know you. I know your story. I'm extremely grateful. Would you speak to me? Of course, I obliged, and we began a conversation that started online, eventually went to the phone. It took me one month to learn this boy's first name. He currently lives in a staunchly conservative Orthodox community here in the States, and he's facing so many of the same challenges that I did in my youth, looking around him for a single example of what his future might look like. Now, I want so desperately to help him. I want to do anything and everything in my power to help him, but I'm limited by my lens on his life and his reality. We're unsure of his future. I promise to do everything in my power to better it, but all I know is that creating the space for him to come out to the first person in his life was of value, of indispensable value. 
You see, we honor truthfulness. We revere vulnerability. We admire authenticity. But being seen, coming out, being proud of who we are, that's indicative of power and privilege. It's not the majority. You know, coming out in and of itself, it's directly related to a feeling of freedom. But as we read the Passover Haggadah every year, we recognize most people aren't free. And though we are commanded to put our Hanukkah in the window every year at Hanukkah, we are actually commanded to do just the opposite if doing so would put our lives at risk. Pikuach nefesh, the value of a human life before any religious obligation. My parents escape, my dark days in those locker rooms, my friend who's in the closet now, they all exemplify the value and the power behind hiddenness. And it's easy, you know, it's really easy to think about two Jewish refugees being smuggled through the mountains of Pakistan as heroes. And, and they, they are my heroes. They have made my entire life possible and my Jewish pride possible. But what about those individuals, those LGBTQ individuals who are in the closet? What do we think about them? How often do we oversimplify the concept of coming out altogether? Why can't they just come out? Well, how much easier might life be then? It, it isn't that easy. <laughs> so I think about my own reality, the fact that it took me as long as it did to get to the place where I could live a life of activism. It wasn't until I had an example first that I could ever even imagine for myself that that future was possible. What's our role now? As Jewish educators, influencers, innovators, community organizers, what is the risk that we are required to take for our future? It is that we create the most inclusive and embracing communities possible, however difficult might that may be, however against the grain that is for us, not only for those individuals who are ready and willing to fight for themselves and are looking to be seen, but for those individuals who can't even imagine that future for themselves, who need us to survive. While pride is a privilege, Building a Jewish community that allows every Jewish soul to feel it is our responsibility. Thank you so much.